Hello and welcome to Dawn English. I'm Nadia Nafi with you. The Punjab by-election results are out. Pakistan Tariq Insaf is celebrating. However, on the other hand, now the most important decision to be taken is by the present government. Would they like to continue or should they go for early elections? Well, this is what the discussion is around. However, what really matters right now are the economic conditions of Pakistan. The market gave, um, you know, a reaction yesterday, we all know. The rupee is sliding. Even today, the dollar is up against the rupee. Um, and um, and the sliding of the currency is of utmost importance because we also know that the inflation levels in Pakistan are hitting record high. So what is the government going to do right now? We also know that former Prime Minister Imran Khan in his uh, press conference come address yesterday had said that Pakistan stands on number five in terms of countries that are close to default and bankruptcy. So is early election the answer to all this economic quagmire or, or the present government should continue? Then what happens about the IMF talks? These are questions that are very important as far as Pakistan is concerned right now. And this is what we're going to discuss today with Dr. Akdas Afzal. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Akdas is an economist and has been writing about all these situations. In fact, even today, um, I, I saw on Twitter how you had been uh, reacting to what is happening, especially about the discount rate, which of course even I feel uh, the present government, when they had raised the discount rate, it was too less, I suppose. It should have been done about 250 basis points in one go. However, let's see what's going to happen next. What is your what what is your take right now, Dr. Agdas, very briefly? Should, should the country go in for early elections and is that the solution to, to these, uh, uh, you know, for, for stability of economy? First of all, uh, Nadia, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's um, a pleasure. It's a real, it's a real pleasure uh, for me as well. Look, I have been uh, writing, I've been talking about this issue for some time. Um, since April, matter of fact, I've been talking about this. I think uh, from my own research that I've done in how countries kind of slide gradually and then suddenly towards an economic meltdown, what we have seen and what we have observed is nothing kills an economy like political instability. So I think, um, and that you're right to say that, you know, the country seems to be heading towards political instability because we have had results coming in from the Punjab by-elections, which were unexpected. And based on the results that have come in, uh, there is a very strong demand by the uh, Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, led by Chairman Imran Khan, um, asking for new elections. However, I personally feel that right now is not the optimal time for holding elections because I personally feel that if we head into elections, um, the first thing the opposition and the government that they, they have to do right now is to agree upon the name of a caretaker prime minister and the kind of atmosphere that is going on the political polarization um, that the country is suffering from right now i don't see uh, the two uh, the two uh, the opposition and the government agreeing on a name for a caretaker setup the second problem is that when when caretakers come in the kind of reforms that the imf has asked for so we are talking about um, reforms in our public finances. We are talking about reforms, relative rate of return to savers. I mean, all these things are extremely difficult, very, very complex, and they require uh, most of all managerial acumen as well as political will by the government. So a caretaker setup that comes in, that they are going to be able to, um, you know, carry out these very, very intense, complex and difficult reforms in a short span of time. So I think the first thing that needs to be done right now is that the government um, needs to, you know, carry out this process of reform that they are doing right now. They okay, need but to there stabilize are two questions. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but sure. Dr. Akhtas, I, I do understand that reforms take a lot of time. There is no quick fix to an economy. But do you feel that in a year's time, if we go, if these assemblies continue and you know they, they continue to function? and the government goes in for general elections at the time when it's supposed to take place, even then do you think the economic stability um, would be in a position that you could go in for a general election and the reforms could continue? Number one is this. Number two, uh, what happens to IMF? 
Does IMF agree to work with the caretaker setup? Well, uh, to answer your first question, you know, uh, at the end of the next one here, are we going to be in a situation where the economy is stabilized? Well, I don't know the answer to that. But what I do know right now is that if you head towards elections right now, it is only going to increase political instability in Pakistan. And I think um, the, the, the thing that we cannot afford to have right now is political instability. So the team that has negotiated with the IMF, the team uh, led by Mifta Ismail that is trying to carry out these uh, reforms, I think they need to continue. They need to be... Um, they need to shoulder this burden because it is their deal at the end of the day. And and mind you, there are a few things that they can do right now to uh, reduce the kind of political uncertainty and panic that we have seen in the markets that you have right. described. You know, I mean, there was a semi bloodbath um, in KSC yesterday, and then the rupee has been sliding very, very significantly against the US dollar. So I think all the different kinds of sources of uncertainty that this government or this economy is facing rather i think they need to be reduced so but for starters what the government i i also feel dr Abdas, where is the central bank right now i mean you need to stop the sliding of the currency so is this political government using this the sliding of the mm -hmm. currency as one of its i would say like a trump card that you know we need to continue otherwise this is what's going to happen number one is this and why do they fail to appoint a governor at the central bank because that's the function of the central bank they need to make the rupee stronger and stop this sliding well look um i think it's not entirely clear if it's the state bank's job right now under the way our exchange rate is being managed so in the under the previous governor, Dr. Raza Bakir, uh, the exchange rate um, was said to be determined by market forces or market determination of exchange rate. I agree with you. I think the state bank needs to intervene right now um, in order to try to protect the exchange rate in in, in some kind of a range. So, so they, so th I, I think they need to do that. And I think in order to do that, the government should appoint. Um, a permanent governor of the state bank immediately. Now, um, should they make the present temporary governor permanent or should they appoint somebody from the outside? I think that uh, call is the government's call. But in either situation, they need to appoint somebody um, at the state bank in order to reduce uncertainty. And there is something very important, Nadia, that Chairman Imran Khan needs to do in order to reduce uncertainty. And you know, so I was looking at different um, cases whereby elections have taken place and a caretaker government comes in and they are in negotiations with the IMF. So the case of Lebanon is very, very instructive, you know. So mm -hmm. Lebanon was going through a similar situation and then they had, um, you know, uh, the most popular uh, democratic uh, leader in Lebanon, Saad Al-Hariri, mm -hmm. who gave out, who, who made this statement that, look, no matter which government comes in, our commitments with the IMF or the program that we are trying to implement in Pakistan, that will continue. So I think if Mr. Imran Khan can give a statement like that, a statesman-like statement in which he agrees that be, and that he... That would be costing him politically, Dr. Sir, because he's been talking about in his public rallies that, you know, they have gone into strict IMF conditions. And also, you know, what happened just right before his ouster, how he choked the IMF program uh, you know, despite the fact that he had agreed on that program, all the conditions, would you really believe that that would help IMF to understand whether it's going to be Mr. Khan in the general elections coming in next term or any other party, you know, they would continue with all the, the conditionalities that have been that's, placed by the present hmm. government. That's exactly what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, you know, Mr. Khan needs to go out into the press, hold a press conference and tell people watching Pakistan's economy right now that look, no matter what happens in this country, no matter who comes into power, we will honor our commitments that this program will stay on course. And I think a statement like that will uh, serve to calm the markets in a very big way. So I, I, I think that would be a very uh, important step uh, taken by Mr. Khan if he can give that kind of a statement. And I think at the end of the day, uh, nothing is bigger than uh, Pakistan's economy or the living standards of Pakistani people. And if anybody can chip in in order to make life easier for Pakistan or to stabilize Pakistan's economy, I think they should go ahead and do it.
Okay, so I don't, I, I don't really, uh, I mean, I mean, comment on this. I, I recall there was an IMF program that Pakistan was into, and at that time, it was um, Nawaz Sharif and Mohtarma Benazir Bhutto who were contesting the elections, and with the caretaker set up, IMF had asked the caretaker set up to give it in writing by these two political parties at that time you know there wasn't any third party that would come to power that if any one of them who would win the general elections would then continue with all the conditionalities that have already been agreed by pakistan i don't know if you recall that or not and if that is how imf still functions well i think i uh, i do remember bits and pieces of what you are mentioning but uh, so so you know at the end of the day if an international institution is about to hand you 1.2 billion dollars and then you know more dollars are to follow they would like some guarantees or what are called credible commitments from the pakistani state that this money is not going to disappear down a rabbit hole because at the end of the day um you know they would like these guarantees and it's it's entirely likely uh that if pakistan moves towards early elections and if there is a caretaker set up IMF is not going to release those funds until and unless they get these credible commitments from these two leading uh, or three leading political parties in Pakistan. Okay, and so what about the other countries that we're looking at, the friendly countries, the funds that are supposed to be coming in from that side? What happens to that? Uh, all these friendly countries that we are looking towards for assistance, I think they they've all been waiting. for the IMF program of or for the IMF funds to be released and because you know IMF's uh, releasing funds for Pakistan's economy is taken as a sign of relative confidence in Pakistan's economy and I'd like to re- uh, remind your um, audience right now that those funds still have not been released by the IMF I mean there has been a staff level agreement but those funds were going to be released anywhere uh, you know not before the third week of august so these country or these friendly countries are not going to give you uh, the funds that we desperately need right now in order to stabilize our finances or to protect um, you know our economy from going into a default before the imf um, gives us the funds that they were going to give us so i think it's a very very precarious situation and all these political parties need to come together and they need to put pakistan or pakistani economy and the people of this country above and beyond their myopic political objectives okay so now this is a very serious condition that you're mentioning that the imf releases its tranche we have the staff level agreement after we have that uh, you know tranche released by the imf there comes the assistance from the friendly countries otherwise even they would be needing some kind of credible commitments as if because pakistan Correct. will have to pay back those loans right so who's going to in your opinion make all these political parties sit down finally to have this charter of economy which in 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 the opinion of uh, mr khan in the last government of his own you know when where he was the prime minister meant that the current political uh, parties are asking for some kind of relief in their cases do you really do you really see that happening who's going to make them sit down look um i think nobody has the power to make all these parties come together and agree on a charter of the economy however when it comes to credible commitments i think there is a veto player in pakistan then that can give this credible commitment to international institutions and uh-huh. i think international Who's international institution i think we will leave that up to uh, our audience's imagination who that <laughs> veto player is i understand um, talking about those alphabets that mr khan has been repeating during his public rallies and he was campaigning for the by elections in punjab that's what you are saying that's not what i have said so <laughs> uh i think so there is there is a veto player in pakistani system and i think every um international lender or foreign government or friendly countries even are going to look towards the veto player whenever things become extremely unstable in pakistan so i think Uh, there is definitely a role for the veto player in terms of stabilizing uh, pakistan's economy if and when political forces fail to stabilize pakistan's economy okay i do understand that veto power can go to the friendly countries and and make them agree but as far as imf is concerned i still have my doubts on that because 
you know that we to power may not have so much of an influence on imf that's what i feel i mean i i can be totally wrong but in my opinion no no yeah. i'm not talking about the uh, influence at all nothing what i'm trying to say is a credible commitment that look we are going to give you this money and uh, you ensure that this money is not going to disappear down a rabbit hole and i think that credible commitment can be given by the veto player if and when political forces fail to reach uh, or find a solution for pakistan's uh, economic crisis only in that case okay so okay i do understand political instability leads to economic instability right but uh, you cannot give the present government uh, you know prime minister shahbaz t- um, economic team a full walk over on what is happening i mean there needs to be a stop as we discussed earlier where is the state bank governor why is the governor not in place we all know that st- the central bank you know is autonomous as far as decisions are concerned in in terms of monetary policy in making the rupees you know strengthening the rupee uh, right now it seems that you know uh, even the governor the acting governor of the state bank is just acting on the behest of the political government rather than taking decisions according to the mandate of the central bank well um you know i mean there are two theories about how central banks operate in the world there are countries where central banks are completely autonomous and independent yet there are many countries in the world where they are dependent or are an extension of the treasury or the ministry of finance and then there are many countries in which the reality is somewhere in the middle in the gray area so i think um according to the needs of the situation the role of the central banks or central bank or the state bank of pakistan in pakistan's case i think it needs to evolve it does evolve and i think this is what is happening right now i think the finance team has done a pretty decent job of um and i and i wrote this in the friday times and i said you know of snatching a deal out of the imf's jaws because at uh, you know during those fateful two weeks in april if you remember that time it seemed like pakistan was going to default and i think uh, unfortunately we have again uh, walked into a situation where political stability has has gone up and 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 that's why i've been making my case in my columns and in my appearances on television that look the last thing this country needs is political instability and elections are not going to give you political stability you need to uh, continue with the present setup uh, i don't know for a year until the constitutional limit even after if you have to and uh, go into elections proper yeah that is my position okay so, so can the government do something as as you know to stop this sliding of the currency that's happening um unfortunately i think there isn't much that they can do because uh we simply do not have the foreign currency uh foreign exchange reserves that are required to protect pakistan's exchange rate i think they can try to play in the um market but i think uh, they they are going to have to call quits very very soon because we like i said we just don't have that kind of a uh, foreign exchange reserves but what the government can do is to stifle and reduce all sources of uncertainty okay. and you know one one thing could be to announce or appoint a permanent governor of the state bank and to be very very clear about what their intentions are going to be yeah okay so the fiscal side of course that mifta smile as you say that he really cracked that deal out of the jaws of imf so um, you know and there are a lot of conditions that have been met I, i suppose and even the budget that was presented by this government was according to the framework of the imf and then there was Absolutely. a lot of right but on the on, on the monetary side do you, do you feel that this government has done enough i don't understand you know in the present scenario the economy there is a slow down and when you increase the discount rate of course uh, you know the economy would slow down further which may lead to loss of job and all all of that but right now mm. the way the the rupee is depreciating there is going to be uh, another tsunami i would say of inflation which which at present is all time high so so we are in a very tough tough position so what should happen at the monetary side i would want to know from your from from your end look um, nadia like you um very appropriately that you know monetary policy or how high the interest rate is you know say 
this has distributional consequences what this means is that you know uh, when um, one segment of society is going to be very happy with a low interest rate you know say the right. uh, business community That's another right. segment you know uh, consumers are not going to be happy because they would like inflation to be controlled or not as high as it is right now so the government has to walk a very fine line between these two competing uh concerns or objectives that they have i think they have done okay up till now but okay is not good enough and like you mentioned you know um even the federal reserve is i mean there are all uh, rumors that they are going to jack up interest rates by about 100 basis points which is unprecedented i mean this is a very very high increase when it comes to the federal reserve and as soon as they do that uh there is there is going to be um a flow of current uh, of of dollars from all countries in the global south towards the us and i think that time is also coming so i think in order to protect the exchange rate in order to control inflation and in order to slow down our economy so which can you know have a positive impact on the external side i think the interest rate needs to go up by at least another 250 basis points in the next 6 months my god and that 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 is what you know as you say it's really a thin line to walk over so in towards the end very briefly do you think pakistan is safe from 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 defaulting from bankruptcy or not yet i think the situation is very uh, precarious um, but as long as international oil prices do not go beyond 120 dollars per barrel there is going to be a lot of inflation in pakistan unfortunately because our exchange rate is um depreciating um in relation to the dollar but this does not mean that pakistan's economy is going to default uh, so as long as international energy prices remain within 105 110 dollars per barrel and the government can bring in some kind of rationing or other measures that they have already done in order right. to protect or conserve uh foreign exchange i think we should be okay yeah no but i still feel they should take if this government is continuing they have to do the uh, you know the petrol rush thing because the the amount Absolutely. that is being used right now is is no less so we are importing i think the same amount um because we are just like 3 minutes away from closing dr akhtar just tell our audience let's suppose the elections you know there are early elections taking place whichever government comes into power or whichever political party makes the government they all will have to go for the imf program is there any other any other possibility that could uh, cause some kind of economic stability unfortunately no okay so all governments whoever makes the government in the next general election will have to continue with the imf program absolutely yes and i think the the other thing that governments need to do right now is to conserve foreign exchange reserves they need to focus on uh, developing strategic oil and wheat reserves or um, you know commodity reserves in case there are um, spikes uh, internationally in the prices of commodities that's another thing that could create some additional problems for government so i think imf um, there is there is no way out for the pakistan's for pakistan's economy without the imf right now and i would um, i would again urge all political parties to come forward and to make a credible commitment that no matter which government comes into power pakistan is going to honor its external commitments and right. i think a statement like that is going to go a very long way in calming the markets as well as those who are watching pakistan from abroad uh, with a lot of nervousness yeah Thank you so much Dr. Akhtar Sasser for giving us time on Dr. English we shall be in talks with you sooner let's see what the situation is like but as Dr. Akhtar puts it economic instability is something that Pakistan cannot afford we need to save from defaults we need to save from a uh, bankruptcy that's what even chairman PTI believes that where we are standing is not a very good condition and Dr. Akhtar feels that Uh, early elections will just lead to more instability it's time that all political parties sit down discuss all of this give credible commitments to the IMF the international monetary funds because once they release uh, you know what has been committed by them 
only then the friendly countries will come to our financial assistance otherwise it's going to be very very difficult for pakistan to be back on track as far as economy is concerned that's all for now thank you so much for joining us take care of yourself goodbye and allah hafiz <laughs>